Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of Space Science with Python. Now the last time we were computing the velocity of the Earth we used some theoretical um, equations to see whether the results make sense and today we will not dive too much into coding we will see what kind of tool we can use to verify our results. So beside this Space Science with Python tutorials where we go into VS Code and coding we will also do later some machine learning and visualization I would also like to provide you some tools like how can I verify these things, how can I visualize maybe interesting data quite quickly and so on. So common tools that are used in the space science community or also by amateur astronomers to simplify the work. So let's have a small recap from last time. So last time we were computing the velocity, position of the Earth, the state vector and so on. And we got a result. So just as you, maybe you remember, we printed out the state vector of the Earth with respect to the Sun for the particular date like today. So today is the 8th of October or the date I'm recording this video, midnight. And the first three results were the X, Y and Z results of the position of the Earth with respect to the Sun in kilometers and the fourth, fifth and sixth value were the velocity of in x direction, in y direction and in z direction given in kilometers per second. And maybe you recall that these three values were, the, were around 30 kilometers per second, so the norm of it. And now the question is, okay, how is there a way to verify this, right? I mean, if we later do some science, we have to be sure that we use the tools I'm showing you properly and not, well, doing something and then later we see, oh, wait a second, we did some mistakes by applying um, wrong input parameters or so. So let's see how we can verify this result here. For this, we use a tool provided by NASA. It's called NASA, the Ho NASA Horizons or the Horizon System. And it's an online tool kit. It also has a REST API and so on that allows you to compute a lot of things, the same thing as SPICE does, but in a web interface. So instead of downloading kernels and going through the documentation, there is some, is, this is a clicky tool where you can go through and see, uh, verify your results or do other calculations as you like. Now let's take a look at the application. The link is also in the description. Now, what do we have here? The application requires five input parameters. First of all, it asks us what kind of ephemeris type we would like to have. So what does it mean? There is the, the results. For example, you want to have the position of Mars as seen from the Earth. You can provide it as either as a vector table, so the x, y, z direction and the velocity, or some kind of coordinates that can be applied to the sky because this x, y, z coordinate doesn't help, for example, a telescope operator because he really needs um, two coordinates in the sky like, you can imagine, like the longitude and latitude on the Earth. There is also a system for the sky because what you see is not really three-dimensional. It's more like a projection um, on our sky sphere. In our case, we would like to have a vector table and there are also other things I can talk, I will show you a little bit later. Mm. The oscillating orbital elements is something where you get simply the results of the orbital elements, but we will talk about orbital elements in a later tutorial. Now let's stick with the vector table. And what is our target body? Well, we wanted to compute the position to Earth, right? So we have a lot of options here. We can uh, search for speci specific bodies, so we can uh, click here something and then search for the Earth or so. Or we select from a list of major bodies. And in our case, it's Earth, and you see the ID is 399. And this ID was also the ID that we used in our SPICE function, in our SPICE API. Now we select the body, the coordinate system, mm, uh, center, in our case, it's not the solar system very center. We want to have the sun. And let's search for the location. Now, if we just type in sun, 
we see that we don't really have the sun, but some other places on Earth, some observatories or places that have the word sun in there. So Sunrise Florida, Sunnyvale in California, and others. Uh, we want to have the sun, so we have to write at sun. And it's also written here. So there's also a lot of documentation how to handle this uh, this this online tool. Now this time the time spec specifications. Our result was from the eighth uh, of October, but it was 2021. To let's say, yeah, or let's take only two days to. Oh no, this month doesn't exist like this. We can also define the step size in days, hours, minutes, whatsoever. So we have now one day, so um, yeah, covering the 8th, the 9th, and the 10th. And the last thing is the table settings. Now what do we have here? We have first an option to define what kind of output quantity we want to have. Like only the position of the planet, the state vector, or do we want to also have the state vector and the light time? You may remember, right, uh, what the time the light needs to travel from the observer to the target and so on. But let's stick with the state vector. Now, what else do we have here? We can also uh, compute the uncertainties and so on, but let's leave it blank. The reference frame is also fine here, so we leave everything in default. Uh, vector correction, what does it mean here, for example? So vector correction is um, interesting if you uh, want to observe, for example, a body from the Earth. Um, let's take, for example, the Moon. The light from the Moon to the Earth takes around one second. So what we see is the state of the Moon one second ago. And the Sun light takes also like seven minutes. So if we observe the Sun from the Earth within the coordinates, it's not like, yeah, like the real position. I mean, of course, you may have heard it's uh, everything is quite relative in space. It's more like the position or the apparent position in the sky of the sun seven minutes ago. So the sun, uh, the, the state of the sun seven minutes ago. But for the observer, it doesn't matter because he really wants to know where is, where, how can I observe it. But let's just stick with the geometric states. So no correction at all. Output units, kilometers and seconds looks also nice. We can also take AU or kilometers and days. And we can also say we want to have a CSV format or not. But let's stick to the defaults. And let's generate the ephemeris. So the results. Now, this was quite quick. The header uh, contains a lot of information, as you see. So there is, for example, the G, the gravitational constant times the mass. Um, as we discussed last time. So this is, for example, here. There are also other parameters of the of the Earth in our case. So what is the total mass of the Earth? What is uh, the radius of the fluid core, of the inner core? What is the escape velocity, um, the area of the land and sea? And if you choose other planets or asteroids, you get other results. Apparently, well, obviously for C, you only get uh, the Earth, right? the mean temperature and so on. So you can also use this system to determine or to compute some basic physical parameters of our home planet. Now let's scroll a little bit down. Here the data starts. So it, I know it looks quite confusing, but well, you get used to it if you use it frequently. It's um, not really, uh, let's say, yeah, some kind of extreme fancy interface it's quite pragmatic and provides you information it's downloadable content that can be used in your code afterwards if you don't want to use spice for example now we have here our start and stop time and a very important information here um, is the source so this is like what kind of kernel has been used to compute the state vector you may remember our kernel was 432 s.bsp now they use de441.bsp so we expect some small deviations um, between the results we see here and ours but they will be really minor so let's scroll down and what do we see here we see here the uh, how the data is formatted so we have our ephemeris time and also the human readable format so this is the 8th of october 
and our x, y, z, and also the corresponding velocities given in kilometers and respectively in kilometers per second. And the results are shown here. Now let's mark it for to guide our eye a little bit easier. So let's see, we have now 144 million kilometers, 1.638, 638, let's go back here, you know, 638, oh yeah, looks quite precise. But then afterwards, here 769, and we have 215. Well, there are some deviations, but again, these depend on the kernel and the precision of the kernel and so on. Now let's take a look at the y values, 3.777, the power of 7. Yeah, looks also quite nice. Yeah, we have deviations afterwards, and then minus 2.53. Um, 2.53 looks also good so like yeah minus two and a half thousand kilometers below the ecliptic plane with respect to the year 2000 now to, let's take a look at the velocity we have here something like minus 8.01 or 02 kilometers per second and this looks also pretty nice and the y value is almost 30 kilometers per second, so 28.7, and we have also 28.7, and also the z, um, the z velocity that's quite small, yeah, fits also nicely. So you see that this NASA Horizon system can be used, for example, to verify your results, and that's quite nice. There's also some other descriptions of the coordinate system. So last time I explain to you how the coordinate system um, is built up and here there is some text for um, explanations and other documentation like where you find the manual and so on but yeah you can see here on the top the tabs here manual there's also tutorial and so on so I cannot really cover everything also the website from the JPL has much more content here that you can use databases and so on but let's stick to the NASA Horizons system. Now if you, I to we talked also about the kernels and how they are sometimes hidden in the system. This can also be used to help you a little bit. You can just click here on small body SPK file. So you get an SPK file, a file that can be loaded by SPICE to then generate, um, like for example, the state vector of an object. Now let's not take the earth as a, as an object, but let's say, let's take series. Yeah, this is, yeah, there it is, series. So a large minor object or asteroid in the asteroid belt, coordinate center. Let's stick with the solar system, Berry Center. I'm wondering whether I changed this. Maybe I didn't change it, so it also caused the deviation. Anyway, we can also specify our time range. So you see here the minimum and maximum range. Well, the point is they probably load some kernels in the background that cover a certain date time range, and then you can customize it a little bit for your needs. Like, well, you want to have all values later between the 1st January um, of this year and next year to cover the entire year. So you can do this here. Use specified time span. Um, some things are grayed out. Yeah course because it's computed with respect to the SSB. Also there's no table settings you can adjust because you just can generate a kernel file. You generate ephemeris and then zit, you see it's downloading a file and the file is BSP. Now you can see here I already downloaded another one probably the same just for testing purposes. So there we have our BSP file and then we can load it and compute our state vectors on our own machine. Well, this was quite a short video today. I hope you liked it anyway. Um, so sometimes we will talk about these tools. I will provide uh, the link of the NASA Horizon system into the description. There will be also uh, the, the, the link to the REST API if you want to have a deep dive into that and also the Git repository of all the tutorial series that will build up over the next couple of months. Now, if you have any questions, just leave a comment here, comment here or something.
Um, next time we will go again into coding. We will talk about the solar system Berry Center and the Sun to see whether there is really a difference or not. And until then, take care and see you next time.